I'm Tracy E. Gilchrist, and this is Equal Entertainment. The five-month-long writer's strike is now over. The Writers Guild Board has voted unanimously to authorize members to go back to work following a tentative agreement between union negotiators, Hollywood studios, and streaming services. It will still have to be approved by members, a vote that is scheduled to happen within a week or so. Writers went on strike back in May. The new contract includes pay increases, better benefits, protections from AI, streaming compensation, longer employment terms, and other perks. That contract is good through May 2026. The Golden Globes is adding two new categories to the upcoming award show. The Globes is adding categories for Best Cinematic and Box Office Achievement, and another for Best Performance in Stand-Up Comedy on Television. There, however, are some rules. Films must achieve a box office gross of $150 million with $100 million from the U.S. to qualify for Best Cinematic and Box Office Achievement. And comedians must give a traditional stand-up performance of at least 30 minutes that aired in the U.S. within the qualifying calendar year. The 81st Golden Globe Awards will take place on Sunday, January 7th. It will be the first show not run by the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. The award show was sold to Dick Clark Productions in June. The Academy Award, once given to the first black actor, will soon be on display at Howard University. The Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences is sending the HBCU a replacement plaque for Hattie McDaniel's Best Supporting Actress Academy Award. McDaniel won the award in 1940 for her role in Gone with the Wind. The whereabouts of McDaniel's original award are unknown today. She gave her award to Howard University upon her death in 1952, where it was displayed until the late 1960s. A couple of interesting equal entertainment facts. One, when McDaniel received her award, she and her guest were seated separately from the other nominees because of racial segregation. And two, McDaniel didn't get a golden statuette or an Oscar, but she received a plaque which was customary at the time for supporting performance winners between 1936 and 1942. Katie Tunstall is known for hits like Suddenly I See and Black Horse and Cherry Tree. Now she's back with new music and a collaboration with the artist Susie Quattro. They came together for an album called Face to Face, and it's just the kind of music we need today. I want to talk about Face to Face, which is your new album with the legendary Susie Quattro. And I have to begin by asking you, what were your earliest memories of Susie? I, I remember her as Leather Tuscadero on Happy Days. And then, of course, that hit song, Stumbling In, that was such a great yeah. song. <laughs> so my, my memories, because Susie is so well known in Europe, in the UK. So whilst not maybe being a household name as a musician um, uh, in the US, she sold 55 million records wow. in the UK and Europe and Australia. So she's much more of a kind of household musician name, whereas I, I definitely remember her from Happy Days because Happy Days was also one of those really quintessential American shows that was on TV in the UK in the 70s and 80s that kind of gave British people their idea of what America was. <laughs> um, so she was part of that, like just part of the cultural vernacular of America for me. Mm. Um, but then of course, as I, as I got a bit older and really was um, gravitating towards wanting to be a musician, she was one of the very, very few female artists that played an instrument while she performed. And actually, she's the bona fide first ever first female rock, rock musician who played an instrument while, while fronting a, a band, being the, the front person. So, you know, she's the, she's the OG. Mm. Chrissy Hind and Joan Jett were yeah. huge Susie Quattro fans. And, and mm. deservedly so. And Can the Can was always the song for me that I was just like, <laughs> this woman is something else. She's incredible. Well, thank you for that little bit of background. And then how did you come to know Susie? I mean, you know, it's you get to meet your idols and uh, yeah. how did you come to know her and come to this position where you collaborate on I mean, a beautiful it's album? It's kind of crazy, right? When you think about all the all the factors that have to occur for two pretty kind of separate artists to come together and make a record together. And so probably ten, between 10 and 15 years ago, 
I was on the bill of this fantastic Elvis tribute, mm. huge show in Hyde Park in London. And Susie was in a, has always been a huge Elvis fan. She told me a story about how Elvis once called her at home because she'd done a cover of an Elvis song and Elvis invited her to Graceland. And she and she said no because she couldn't handle, you know, meeting her God. And um, wow. and she says she never regrets that. It was just it would have been too much, you know, to cross that veil of meeting him. But we met after that show. She grabbed me backstage and just said, I, I want to give you the rock baton. And she gave me this, you know, this this imaginary, powerful, like wizardess, high priestess rock baton and said, you're the only one I see doing what I did and what I do. Wow. Uh, and, and I said, we should do something together. And she said, I'd love to. And so I want to touch on too, uh, you know, you released Nut in 2022 and now face to face in 2023, it's a really prolific time where there's also so much upheaval mm. and difficulty in the world with the pandemic and you know, social justice issues everywhere. And for a lot of artists, that is something, you know, under that kind of duress, it's hard to create, but you were prolific. And would you talk a little bit about how making music and creating art uh, maybe helps you through those times? That's a great question, Tracy. Thank you for asking that. I, I've always felt extremely blessed. I'd never use that word lightly because it's yeah. kind of overused. Yeah. But I've always yeah. felt very blessed to be able to write songs. And I think um, as artists, I always make jokes about it at gigs that it's like the it's it's the quintessential rolling a turd and glitter. <laughs> <laughs> it's that when something very difficult happens in life, yeah, you literally have this this internal support system to make something positive out of it, mm. and it's something that I think we all try and do uh, in life is is try and see problems as opportunities, or at least we try to. Um, but actually, as an artist, it really is a, a, the golden opportunity of how to make work to not just kind of expunge the feelings out of yourself, but also deal with them in a way that eventually ends up being quite helpful mm -hmm. and of service to other people. When I listen to It's Too Late by Carole King or, you know, The Whole of Blood on the Tracks by Bob Dylan, Dylan. <laughs> oh my God, that's exactly mm -hmm. how I feel. And I needed someone else to put it into those simple words and those simple melodies for me so that I could feel it and then let it go. Um, and so I did find it really challenging through lockdown particularly because I just felt, usually when I write, I disappear into a bit of a bubble. Mm. and I just couldn't disappear. I felt like every day just had the back of my shirt in its fist and just wouldn't let me disappear and I was also working on musical theater for the first time at that time and I actually look back and I was very busy mm. um writing at home I was also quite excited about a transitional period of life where mm. I would prefer to be writing at home more rather than being out on the road all the time it's not something I want to do um nine months of the year anymore right. i've had a great time but i'm quite happy with three months instead yeah. of five. <laughs> uh, susie would totally disagree with that she loves touring still in her 70s so she's out all the time. oh my gosh um but i just i i i i definitely have a feeling that i want to do other things with life as well so um it was very difficult to write personal stuff Mm. I just didn't feel in touch with myself in that yeah. way because I felt like I was such high alert yeah. of what was going on in the world. I couldn't kind of go into that dream place. You can watch the Advocate channel live by downloading our app in the Apple or Google Play Store. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. For the Advocate channel, I'm Tracy Gilchrist. Thank you for watching.